Hello and welcome to High School Football on WOSN. Alongside Dart Evergall, I'm Evan Skilleter, and tonight we are in Macomb for a big time BBC showdown between the Macomb Panthers and the Liberty Benton Eagles as we are underway. The Eagles will return the kick. It goes into the end zone for a touchback. So, Dart, a pair of teams that are vying for a conference title. Now, Macomb already has clinched at least a share. Macomb 6-0 in the Blanchard Valley Conference, but the Liberty Benton Eagles 5-1. A win here would send Macomb to one loss in the conference, and there'd be a three-way tie at the top with these two teams and Arlington, so a lot on the line tonight. Oh, absolutely a lot on the line tonight. Not only that, but you got playoff implications too. Right now you got Liberty Benton coming in at ninth in their region, Division 5. you got uh, Macomb number one in their region, but LCC nipping at their, t in their feet as well. Liberty Benton starts with the ball at the 20 yard line and quarterback Cam Garlock throws it quickly out to the left side and McComb with the quick tackle. It'll be a pickup of a couple on the play that pass completed out to Seth Elkert. Well, that's one thing McComb's gonna really have to keep in, t in check is Cam Garlock. Cam coming in and hit 77% of his passes, 2,244 yards, 25 touchdowns, nine interceptions. So. You know, Cam likes to throw the ball all over the place. And he's got some great receivers out there as well. It's a pickup of three, second down seven for the Eagles. They send a man in motion. That's Braden Wages. And they'll keep this one on the ground with the quarterback, Garlock. He picks up a couple more, so a third and short coming up for the Eagles. Yeah, we talk about you know, the passing game for this, this team. This is going to be a kind of a real contrast in play tonight because you got a, a team in Macomb that likes to run the ball. you got a team in... You know, Liberty Benton likes to throw the ball, so you're going to see a lot of different plays out there between these two teams. It's third down two. Garlock in the gun with three receivers split out to his right. He rolls that way. The left he throws. He completes that one to Seth Elkert. They needed the 30-yard line, and I think they're well short. In fact, they're going to be about two yards short, so a fourth down coming up for the Liberty Benton Eagles, who are 7-2 and two overall, losses to that Arlington team we talked about earlier, as well as a non-conference opponent, Mogador. And it looks like the Eagles will go for it. They line up for that, at least. Wow, big play here, trying to go fourth down this early on, trying to get him to jump off sides. If that don't work, I can see him you know, calling a timeout. Be an early timeout, but it does look like that's going to be the case. Play clock down to 10. Garlock and company looking over to the sideline for direction. And they are going to take a timeout just about two minutes into this game. And with that, we'll step aside as well. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Our scoreboard is made possible by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, and they're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Welcome back for fourth down and two as the Eagles kick this one away. It was punter Cason Doolittle. He drops that right at the 46. It rolls forward, then rolls back, and so McComb will take over on offense led by a host of quarterbacks. Andrew Swisher and Blake Wittenmeyer will split duties today. Two guys that are very capable of running this offense. Swisher, more of a running quarterback. Wittenmeyer, the passer. And that's because McComb lost their starting quarterback early in the year, but they haven't missed a beat. No, they certainly have not. And you know, like I said, this is really a running team. And Swisher's one of those guys that can run the ball. Braxton Althauser is the other one back here that can run the ball a lot. So this team likes to run the ball. And they'll start with Chase Woodruff at quarterback, actually, as he pitches it out to the left side. That's Althauser with the run, and it's a six-yard pickup, maybe more like five yards on first down. Yeah, this Macomb team coming in averaging 45 points a game, only giving up 16 points a game. You know, an interesting stat for both these teams is Macomb comes in, they've outscored their opponents in the first quarter, 154 to 21. Well, you look on the flip side, Liberty Benton's outscored their opponents 132 to 14 in the, four, in the first quarter. They'll keep it on the ground with Altauser. He picks up a couple more near the first down marker. It's going to be close. Looks like a yard short. He's down at the 45. He needed the 44. So third down short for the Panthers. Yeah, Braxton, a junior, 5'10". He's carried 
you know, for 574 yards, averaging about 10 yards a carry. You know, he scored 14 touchdowns on the ground. We come with three runners in the backfield. They'll hand this to Swisher, and Swisher has enough for the Heagle Insurance first down. First downs are provided by Heagle Insurance in Finley with over 65 years of experience in the insurance industry, offering coverage for auto, home, business, life, commercial, and more. Yeah, you talked about McComb running this, you know, quarterback by committee thing that they do because they lost their uh, number one signal caller. But, you know, it depends on what they want to run because, they, you know, Switzer is a good receiver as well. He's good on the outside on the running plays. Old Heidner is a great running back as well. So it depends on who you want to put underneath center. This is Althauser on the carry. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe falls forward for a few inches, but it'll be second and long for the Panthers. And you mentioned all the different guys that can throw the football. Normally they're all on the field at the same time. Wittemeyer yeah. playing over at the tight end spot, Woodruff under center, and Swisher in the backfield running the ball. Well, you know when you got Woodruff in the backfield, you know, under, under center, he's only thrown the ball twice so far this season. So he runs the option play more for them. You know, Whitmire's a, a very accurate passer. And Swisher with a nice cut upfield. Oh, he's got out. some he's space gone. down the left side, and it's a touchdown, touchdown. for the Panthers. Touchdown. Your touchdowns tonight sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling. Wow, Swisher just one of those runners. Boy, you can't let him get into the secondary because he's going to motor right past everybody, and that's what he did. Great blocking up front by the uh, Panthers as well to free him out to get out to that south side. Once he got into the open field, there wasn't anybody going to catch him. One guy had a hold of his jersey, but he ran right out of that. Brad Meals to do the kicking. This one's down. The kick is up, and it looked like that hold got down just a little bit late. So it's no good, and your score on the Charles River scoreboard is 6-0. 7.50 to go in the first quarter. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Touchdowns tonight are presented by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. Paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. And our first touchdown of the night goes to Andrew Swisher from 40 yards out. And it's our first score on this board here in Macomb. Yeah, what a great run by Andrew Swisher. And like we said, you know, this Macomb team likes to run the ball. And they've got so many guys back there that can run it. And so many guys that can just break tackles and get out into the open. You know, and they have the speed to just outrun anybody. Another nice kick down to the goal line and into the end zone it goes. So another touchback. And the Eagles will come back out. Three and out on their first drive against a very good Macomb defense. Yeah, like I said, Macomb's only given up 16 points a game. You know, their only loss this season was, was to guess who? Marion Local. Uh, in the second week of the season, you know, they, they took a beating from Marion Local. And ever since then, they've been piling up win after win after win, including a very, you know, big win against Arlington a couple weeks ago. Spread, spread formation, two wide receivers either side, but Liberty Benton will keep this on the ground with Mason Mod. Mod picks up a yard on first down. Number 52, Owen DeWeese on the tackle. Owen, Dewey, making the stop for the Panthers. Eight of one. Second Second down, down nine. Three wide receivers out to the right side of this formation for Liberty Benton. Garlock sends Seth Elkert in motion. He's alone in the backfield. Garlock wants to pass, throws this one, and it's caught. Good pitch and catch there as Braden wages. Gets the grab and has plenty for the Eagle Insurance first down. Yeah, great wages. Just that's just his ninth catch so far this season. He's 91 yards coming into this game. He averages about 12 yards a carry by a catch. But you know this LB team averages almost 15 yards per catch. Don't blink as Liberty Benton gets right back up to the line and Garlock fakes it to the running back and takes it himself. Picks up two. And that's the thing with Garlock. You know that's one of the things that. Chris Algie and his coaching staff says we got to control their quarterback on the option. Because now, Garlock get it right, Gar. I'm going to interrupt you. He said somehow we need to contain <laughs> yeah, the Garlock. Somehow we need to contain him. <laughs> yeah, because he's definitely uh, can run the ball as well. 
Garlock throws this one on the out route and out of reach of his intended target, Kaysen Doolittle. Yeah, you're right, Evan. Somehow you've got to contain that game. Option quarterbacks are the hardest things in the world to you know, contain. Great pressure there by McComb, though, on Garlock to force him to throw that just a little wide of his receiver. And you got rid of it a little bit faster than he wanted to get rid of it. That brings up third down eight. Five wide receivers set. Looking to pass, Garlock steps up, nowhere to go, and he's gonna be brought down from behind as two more Panthers come up and clean that one up. Getting up from the bottle, bottom of the pile, looks like we got number 61, Nick Bermuth. Great defense by Comb. I mean, they're just, they're blitzing in there, they're getting in there, and they just, you know, the guys are getting on the outside, coming around on the ends, and able to force uh, Garlock to try to run the ball. Another punt coming up for Kaysen Doolittle. Kicks this one down to about the 25 yard line where a fair catch is called for. And McCombs offense will come back out. I mentioned that Liberty Benton seven and two overall. McComb eight and one overall. Their only loss to a team that has beat everyone else too. Marion Local is 42 to zero. Now that's a really good Marion Local team that you'll likely see playing in the state title game once again this year. You know, absolutely. I mean, very local play in Coldwater tonight in a big, you know, game down there in the MAC. But uh, year in and year out, you can expect Marion Local to be up there somewhere. Going back to work, they'll run this one to the left side. They'll pick up just a couple on first down. The other thing, too, with a team like McComb that likes to run the football so much, you know, they, they pretty much control the clock. I mean, they, you know, you saw Switzer burst out of there for a 40-yard touchdown run, but mostly they like to control the clock. They like to have long drives. They like to get, you know, the score at the end of it, you know, but they like to keep the offense of the other team off the field. This is Altauser makes one guy oh, miss. Look out. He's got some wheels. Watch him go across the 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, McComb. Oh, my goodness. 78 yards for the touchdown. Don't blink, folks. Wow. These McComb Panthers can giddy up. That's his 15th touchdown of the season so far for Braxton Oldhauser. And my goodness. And he had two guys from Liberty Benton right on his heels, and he just outran them that point. McComb wants to go for two. They have the field goal unit out there. Coach Algy giving a play to Chase Woodruff. And I think he's going to have to take a timeout with his team having the wrong unit on the field. And he does indeed. That's the first timeout for McComb after a Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown. We step aside. 508 to go first quarter. It's high school football on WOSN. Today's premier sponsor for the Mocone Panthers is Hoverman Insurance, focusing on giving our clients the personal customer service they deserve. Cone called that timeout in order to get the right unit on the field. They missed the first PAT, so they're trying to make this a 14-point game after the 79-yard touchdown run from Braxton Althauser. And McComb pushing on the right side, but they are not going to get there. So the score stays at 12-0. So Dar already McComb with 129 yards of offense, all of which are on the ground. Liberty Benton just 35 yards of total offense. Well, defense from McComb playing a great, playing really well. But you know, I tell you what, like I said, you just saw the speed of two of these guys from McComb once they get into the open to run for those touchdown runs. And, and I was talking about you know the stat of you know outpointing your opponents in the first half, first quarter. A remarkable start for, for McComb coming in this game. They've outscored their opponents in the first half, 299 to just 63. You know, Jeez. And that will be on the, on the flip side has outscored their opponents 254 to 52. So we really didn't expect, we expected you know both these teams to put points up on the board, but McComb's off, our defense is just doing an outstanding job of getting in there and forcing Garlock out of his game. And he's had to throw wide of his receivers. He's been pressured on every throw he's made, you know. So they're doing their job out there. They just continue to do it. 
Holm will kick this back to Liberty Benton. Two touchbacks already tonight for the Panthers. It's Chase Woodruff that does the kicking. Always impressed when a small school like Macomb or Liberty Benton has a kicker that can put it into the end zone with relative consistency as this one's kicked slightly short and a chance to return for Liberty Benton. But good form. I mean, those are end over end kicks too. There's no squibbing or anything. Uh, Seth Elkert taking it across the 20 yard line up to about the 22. So the Eagles with some work to do early on, finding themselves down 12 to nothing. Well, their front line, you know, has got to give uh, Cam Gar like more time to throw the ball. They got to control this McComb defensive front. You know, you're looking at Liberty Benton's front line, you know, of number 52, Javen Carpenter, 68, Brady Joliffe, 74, Isaiah Higgins. You're looking at uh, Devin Montablon and Will Granger in there as well. Quick pass on the comeback route. Cason Doolittle with the grab. That's a good first down play. You got yourself about you know, six yards maybe on that one. Pickup of five. So second and five here. Liberty Benton with two. Split out right. They'll keep this one on the ground. And down in the backfield goes Zach Elkert. Thane Steinbrook, the Macomb tackler in the backfield, and it's a loss of a yard, so third and six coming up here for Liberty Benton. They only have one first down so far tonight. Garlock in the shotgun, two wide receivers split out left. He looks to pass, has some time, now throws over the top and in and out of the hand right, of the receiver. And intercepted by McComb. That's Brad Mills coming down with it. That's Brad Mills. I believe that's his uh, fourth interception this season. Good, good focus by Brad Mills on that one too, because that went in and out of the hands of Garlock, you know, Lincoln Garlock, right into his hands, and he was able to keep his focus on it. So McComb will start this drive from the Liberty Benton 39 yard line. Woodruff stays in the game at quarterback. He's under center. He's gonna look to pass this one. Woodruff goes down the left side and that one oh, is caught. caught. How about that oh, Camden my. Glazer? What, what a great job by Glazer down on that sideline down there. Two guys all over the all over him, and he was still able to focus in on that football and pull it down and just before he went out of bounds. Nothing tricky about that play. Two-step drop. Yep. And Woodruff just launched it down the left side, and it's enough, obviously, for a Eagle Insurance first down. And the Panthers knocking on the door of yet another touchdown. Left side, Swisher puts his shoulder oh, down, easy. and he gets in for the Northwest Touchdown. Ohio Recycling Touchdown. Andrew Swisher. Unbelievable first quarter from the Macomb Panthers, and it's not even over yet, folks. Three minutes and 41 <laughs> seconds to go. 18-0 on the Charles River scoreboard, PAT pending. They'll try to kick this one. I'll be honest with you, Evan, I did not expect this at all. I mean... We figured we'd have a really good game between these two teams. Both of them come in high-powered offenses, but McCombs' defense has just been outstanding. And that one incomplete. And so the score remains 18 to zero. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We'll be right back. Tonight's first downs are provided by Eagle Insurance in Finley with over 65 years of experience in the insurance industry, offering coverage for auto, home, business, life, commercial, and more. 18-0 to here in Macomb. The Panthers dominating this first quarter against the Liberty Benton Eagles, looking for a BVC title all on their own. And they're dominating it with big plays and great defense. 
And another kick Jeez. from Wittenmeyer sent into the wow. end zone. So three out of four of his kickoffs have been touchbacks. And now Liberty Benton will come back out following an interception. Cam Garlock, who has thrown 10 now this season. But that might sound like a lot. He has 25 touchdowns. This is a great quarterback we're watching tonight. But this McComb defense has been up for the task so far in the first quarter. Well, he's, he's just out of rhythm a little bit with his receivers. He's throwing a couple of them wide to him. You know, that one there was was right on the money to to uh, Lincoln Garlock, but it just went off his hands right into the hands of Brad Mills. But Quick pass out to the left side. That's Mason Mod, and Mod gets a couple. And Mod, 92 yards coming in this game reception-wise, averaging all, just under eight yards a game uh, a catch. It's a pickup of four. Second down six here. They split two wide receivers out to the right side. Garlock has a man to his left. That's Mod who goes in motion. And then Wages goes in motion. They'll run this with Mod. Mod breaks a couple tackles, has some space up the left side, and picks up the Hegel Insurance Agency first down. Yeah, that's the guy. You know, Mod. Mod. You know, like I said, he hasn't. He's only got 13 catches this season, but he's ran. That's his 40th carry this season. Is you know, in the backfield, 90, you know, 245 yards, five touchdowns. He's fumbled the ball twice, and he's lost one of those. Eagles pass it quickly out to the left side for the completion to Lincoln Garlock. They pick up four on that one. Eagles moving the ball quickly. They get McComb to jump, but not far enough for an encroachment. Uh, they'll look back to the sideline for some direction. Play clock just at 20. No problem here for the Eagles as they split two wide receivers either direction. Garlock, high snap, gets it down to Mod. Mod oh. met at the line of scrimmage and pushed wow. backward. He does pick up a yard, so it will be third down five. It's like he ran into a brick wall over there. Eight and one on the play. That'll make a third down and five. Three wide receivers out to the right side this time. Two out to the left, empty backfield. Garlock wants to pass, nowhere to go, pulls it down, now throws, and that one's incomplete. It went into the arms of Lincoln Garlock, but it was a really good defensive play back there by Camden Glazer, who might not have tipped the ball, but certainly impacted the catch. Oh, absolutely. You know, he got into the line of vision of, of Lincoln Garlock on that one there. But again, pressure on Cam Garlock, forcing him to kind of run up out of the pocket and throw on the run. Eagles trying the hard count. So you got to be down impressed five. with this front line, defensive line here for McCollum. Garlock runs this one. He has enough for the Eagle insurance first down as he crosses into Panther territory up to the 46. Good play call there as they spread the field. Quickly back to the line. Keep this on the ground. Garlock has plenty of space. Oh, Garlock out. cut to the right side. A couple guys to beat. He's brought down as he crosses the 15 yard line, but another Eagle insurance first down as the Eagles get inside the 20. Now that's one thing Liberty Bend can, you know, can hang their hat on is the fact that, you know, you send that many receivers downfield, you're going to spread this defense out. That gives Garlock an opportunity to find some holes to run through. Garlock, quick throw, and that's out of reach of his target. Intended for Seth Elkert. Nope, pardon me. That was intended for his brother Lincoln. And again, just missing on those passes, just out of the reach of, of his receivers. I mean, he throws a hard ball, too, and if it's not right on the money, it's tough to, to pull that in if he's throwing it wide. Minute 30 to go in the first quarter. Wages in motion. Garlock wants to run this one and has nowhere to go. Garlock. Might have picked up one or two, but it's a third down coming up for Liberty Benton. 
I tell you, that, that hole collapsed really quickly up front there. Just a big pile he ran into, and there was nowhere to go around it. Now a, a rare sight as the Eagles will huddle up before this third, third down, down play. For the Eagles. It's third down and nine. See what they set up here with the huddle. Garlock has two split out right, two to the left. Throws this quickly up the middle, and it's intercepted! Off the hands of Lincoln Garlock and picked off again. And this time, it's Montana Pierce. Wow. Uh, actually, I take that back. The referee's now saying incomplete, but there's a flag down anyway. Flag on the play. Get the referee's call here in a moment. Some murmurs of Russ roughing the passer up here. Yeah, they'll give Liberty Benton a first down. Still no actual call from the referee, but they're marking yards off against the Panthers. Here it comes, personal foul, roughing the passer. So automatic first down as the ball moves up to the, what is that, the six yard line? It's about the six yard line, yep. The Eagles once again will huddle up with 37 on the clock in the first quarter. Well, let's see if Liberty Bank can take advantage of that now. That's a break for them, and unfortunately, an unfortunate break for uh, McComb. But Liberty Benton, you know, needs to get us points out of this drive here. Garlock's going to go under center this time. Mod lined up behind him. They have Zach Elkert in kind of a fullback spot as he shifts over to the right side. Garlock hands this off, and Maude brought down short. Down to about the two. Eagles quickly back to the line. Garlock with the snap, falling forward, and he's down short. McComb trying to put together a goal line stand here. It's Third down and about three inches to go. Yeah, he's trying to go into that big defensive line for McComb, and they're holding right now. But. We'll see if McComb can hold on two plays straight. When we return, it's the end of the first quarter. Second quarter coming up after this on WOSF. Our scoreboard tonight is made possible by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Welcome back for a third and goal as Cam Garlock takes the snap, falls forward, and he's down short again. So we will have a fourth down and goal. McComb has stuffed Liberty Benton on three straight plays. The Eagles will try this one more time, I presume. I doubt they'll kick a field goal at this point. Well, if you just watch McCombs' defensive front, I mean, they're just falling down right there, when, you know, building this big wall of bodies that he's trying to try to push his way through. I mean, I can see if you, you know, as an option quarterback, you kind of fake that, you know, like Mod or somebody going up that middle like that and just cut it around the outside a little bit because McCombs converging on that middle. Eagles go power on the right side. Garlock rolls that way, and he's in this time. Touchdown for the Eagles. It's a Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown. And a big flag, too. So a flag on the field, and like you said, Darv, this is a big one. Touchdown counts. And a personal foul against McComb after the play. So it is a touchdown. Liberty Benton able to slow the bleeding a bit as they Went down early, 18 to six, but that's a big drive for the Eagles, and we'll see what they try to do here for the PAT. Yeah, I think they might be lining up here for. See, your kicks are uh, extra points here. Well, they took the penalty yards, so the ball placed at the one yard line. The Eagles are gonna try to go for two here. 
Garlock will stay under center. Garlock sends a man in motion. They give it to Mod right side. Mod into the end zone. Yep. Two point conversion good. And your score here in Macomb, the Panthers 18, Liberty Benton 8. We step aside to watch high school football on WOSN. Finally punching one into the end zone. And we have a touchback here on the kickoff. So McComb will come back out. 133 yards of total offense in the first quarter. Only 35 of those came in the air. Dar, that's an average of 18.7 yards per play. This offense clicking. Yeah, it certainly is. And like I said, this, this McComb offense, you know, likes to chew up a lot of time. And they like to keep it on the ground with those three running backs and three or four running backs that they got back there. Not a big team. There's not a lot of on players on this roster for Macomb. So they got a lot of guys going both ways, you know, all season long, but they've seemed to survive that. Althauser to the outside. Althauser stays on his feet, but ends up getting pushed out of bounds. And he picks up, well, he might have just gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like maybe Anderson Roberts over there on the on the Anderson tackle. Roberts making this top. And indeed, he just gets back to the line of scrimmage. So two, or sorry, second down 10 coming up. And this one off left side and push forward for a few. Now let's see if that touchdown by Liberty Benton is gonna fire up this. Liberty Benton defense as well, and so far it has in the first two plays. Looking at a third and seven for, for the Panthers. Third down and seven now for the Panthers at their own 23. Under center. They run it to the right side. Swisher looking for space, needs the 30. He gets close, and the second effort puts him down just short. Decision time for the Panthers, who haven't gone backward on a single play yet today. They only need a few inches. Yeah, good open. The flag does come out. Liberty Benton, but it's a big one as the drive continues for McComb. And to the left side they go. Nothing there once again. One that McComb didn't want to be in because they don't want, they don't throw the ball, so you see. Althauser gets a couple, but he's going to be two yards short. And similar situation. Another interesting decision for uh, Coach Algie and his coaching staff. Trots Woodruff back out there. A fourth and two. 
43 yard line. Referee has to pull out the paper card to see if there's any separation. You know it's close. Wow. I didn't think it was that close at all. But Angles can be deceiving. It's an optical. Fourth down, turnover on downs. The Eagles take over with great field position here. And a game that looked like it could get out of hand early could now really be flipped on its head if the Eagles can get to within one score. Yeah, McComa like nothing better than hold them right here and force them into a three and out. But again, another score here by Liberty Benton. We're right back into this game. And a false start against the Eagles. They sent two It's a timeout instead, so with eight minutes left. Tonight's touchdowns are presented by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. Paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. First and 10 for Liberty Benton following a timeout. Cam Garlock looking for somewhere to go with the ball. He slips in the backfield. Now he's going to try to pull it down as Montana Pierce grabs him at the line of scrimmage. Boy, he Swisher had in there as well. The Sorry, Dor. Man, he had all the time in the world. But I'll tell you what, great coverage by the secondary by McComb back here, forcing Garlock to run around back here. But that's, that's the most time I've seen him have all night long mm. to throw the ball. And he just, you know, couldn't find anybody open. Second down, 10 now. Garlock splits two guys out to his left. Quick pass out to the right side. Nice comeback route by Doolittle. And it's going to be just short of the first down, I believe. We'll see where the official spot puts the Eagles. And it is just a bit short. So a third and short here. Garlock hands this to Mod. Mod has enough. And as a matter of fact, it might have been a first down. The chains moved a little late there. I have to see how they just switched over to second down. So that was a first down play. It went for four yards. Brings up second down six. Second down and six. Interesting second down six here. Garlock out to the Whoa. left side. Nobody there. I think he expected Seth Elkert to run an out route. Instead, he just kind of stopped and came back. So it's incomplete. Third down six coming up. And that's been the, the pattern all, so far here in this first half for this Liberty Benton Eagles. Is they just have not had the right timing between the receivers and the, you know, the quarterback. Which is unusual when you get into week 10. You think that's that's not going to be a problem any longer. Empty backfield. Garlock throws to his right side. That one's caught. A tackle broken by Seth Elkert, but a host of Panthers meeting him after the contact. And it's a fourth down. They lose yards. Looks like about seven yards to go for the Eagles. A great play there by the Macomb defense again. You know holding their positions, knowing where the receiver is at. The first guy had him wrapped up, spun him around, 
and then they were able to finish him off from there. Fourth and eight, Garlock stays on the field. Empty backfield, four wide receivers split to the left side. Doolittle alone on the right. Garlock to throw over the top to the end zone, incomplete. Overthrowing his target, Seth Elkert, and McComb gets the ball right back. Wow. And timing's everything. And right now, the Liberty Benton, you know, passing game just doesn't have that timing down. And I'm, uh, it's surprising when you get into week 10 that you'd have those kind of problems. But, you know, again, you know, just missing, you know, not by much. But the pass has been wide, wide outs. And, you know, and that one just overthrown. Garlock now 8 for 15 passing with that one interception. McComb back to work. Woodruff under center. Hands this one off to the right side. And Liberty Benton well covered as Althauser couldn't find anywhere to go. He does fall forward for positive yardage to bring up second down nine. Yeah, it was Mason, Mason Mott on the tackle there. They've been testing that right side all night long. And Mott's come through with a couple big plays for uh, Liberty Benton. Home offense could run this five minutes off real quick. Wow. Nice play by the Liberty Benton defense. In the backfield was Ethan Bauer. He drops Althauser for a loss. Ethan Bauer, a senior, six foot, 235 pounds, and he just nailed him coming through cross that. That was actually Brad Meals on the carry. First time I've called his name running the football tonight. Drops him back for a loss and a third and nine now for Macomb. They've only passed one time. There was a long completion. They're going to keep it on the ground. Swisher has to make a couple guys miss. And my goodness, what a run. Ooh. And that hit at the end. Some Macomb fans wanted a penalty, but yeah. I think he was well in bounds as he was hit there hard by Gavin Gillig. And it's going to be a fourth down Gavin short. I think he was a yard in bounds. Yeah, I think he was too. Wow, fourth and one, they're going for it. Nobody's going to throw the ball or hunt the ball tonight, it looks like. And McComb wanted to draw Liberty Benton offside. They get it. Welcome back for this fourth down short. McComb will go for it. Three runners in the backfield. Woodruff takes the snap. They hand it to the right side. And Swisher has enough for the Eagle Insurance first down as he's brought down by Mason Moth. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, that quick handoff to Swisher, and he's got that quick first step around the end like that. You know, he's going to get that first down. There's no doubt about it because you know, he's already crossed the you know, line before anybody's had, even had a chance to react. First and 10, they run it again. Right side, nice stiff arm by Swisher. to help McComb get yards. And you don't want to help him get yards, that's for sure. Thank you. 
Treasure the ball carrier. Right side this time, Swisher oh. has space, but a oh, nice, nice job. tackle. If he would have broken that one, he would have been into the end zone, but instead it's Brady Berkemeyer with the big tackle to bring up third down. Brady I'll tell you what, Brady Berkemeyer coming into this game, 98 tackles, six tackles for losses and one interception, and no tackle bigger than that one right there. Third down and two. They can get a first down at the one-yard line. Woodruff hands this one off. Swisher. Swisher runs into a tackler. He doesn't have a touchdown, but it looks like he might have enough for the Eagle Insurance first down. Looks like it might have been hit by Trevor Otley right there. And it is indeed enough for that first down. So McComb with three plays to go one yard. Make it four plays, excuse me, to go one yard. The key for McComb right now is hold on to that football. And yeah, don't fumble that ball. Hang on to that. Here we go. Woodruff hands this to the up back and near the goal line. Referee says touchdown, Panthers. Touchdown. And that was Montana Pierce, I believe, on the carry. And so McComb, who have missed all of their PAT attempts, will likely go for two here following the Northwest Ohio Recycling touchdown. Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. We got Chase Woodruff in there. Woodruff takes the snap, hands to Swisher. Swisher to the right side. Swisher with the hard-earned two-point conversion. And McComb goes up 26-8. 124 to go in the second quarter as we step aside. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's first downs are provided by Hegel Insurance in Finley. With over 65 years of experience in the insurance industry, Hegel Insurance offers coverage for auto, home, business, life, commercial, and more. Welcome back to Macomb and Doc Miller Field, where Macomb leads 26 to 8, looking for the BVC title the outright BBC title. We talked about it at the top of the broadcast, but if McComb does drop this game, there's a three-way tie for the BBC crown, but right now, McComb cruising. Oh, they certainly are, and they're trying to hang on to that number one spot in their region as well. I mean, they're gonna host a playoff game next week, regardless of whether they win or lose this game, but, you know, they'd like to hang on to that number one spot. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, but a nice pickup by Austin Collard as he crosses into Macomb territory. Woodruff's been putting these into the end zone all night, and that one looked like he topped it like I topped my driver. <laughs> and it was a little bit to the left, too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 
Now I'm about about done with golf for the year. Yeah. This ball actually right at midfield, so Liberty Benton will look to go 50 yards with 119 on the clock. Lincoln, like or Cam Garlock, excuse me, like in the shotgun. Trying to go for a long strike right off the bat. And they do over the top and in and out of the hands of Braden Wages. Incomplete. We've seen a couple nice passes from Cam Garlock get dropped tonight. Yeah, a great defense there by McComb, though. I mean, he was all over the receiver. Second and 10 coming up following the incompletion. He throws a nice spiral ball, too, but he throws out of his left hand. You know, but by this week, your, your receivers should be used to that. But that was right on the money. But, you know, again, great defense by the home defensive back. Garlock with plenty of time to throw. Yeah, now throws. He's got his brother wide open, Lincoln Garlock, and a big Eagle Insurance first down. Can't give a guy that much time. No. Doesn't matter how good your defensive backfield is. Great job by the Liberty Benton offensive play a line to, to, to not get a hold or anything on that play. And great job by you know, you know Lincoln Garlock. He just floated out there until he was able to get himself free, get a little separation from the defensive back. Now he rolls out to the right side, throws this oh, to the end zone, it is. and wide open for the touchdown is Kaysen Doolittle. A Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown, the second of the night for Liberty Benton. And they cut into this lead. It's 26 to 14 with a PAT pending. That was just a perfect pass by Garlock. Caught Doolittle running, you know, across the field, hit him in stride. It was just walked right into the end zone then. He'll go for two here to try to make it a 10 point game. Garlock gets a man to jump. And move it a little bit closer for that two-point conversion. And someone's taking a timeout. It's Liberty Benton. So McComb with three quick scores to start this game. And it's usually a situation where you think the Opponent's going to be shell-shocked and can really get away from you. I had a game last week uh, over in New Bremen where New Bremen got up 28 to nothing early in the first half. And you thought that one would get out of hand as well, but Minster ended up winning the second half. And right now, Liberty Benton able to, to hang tough after going down early. Well, when you've got a passing game like Liberty Benton has, you, you can never count those guys out. I mean, they can know those quick strikes and get right back in this game in a hurry. And that's what they just did on that play right there two good passes and you can't give you know cam garlock that kind of time back there to throw the ball because he's going to run around until he finds his receivers and his receivers are smart enough you know they're going to find their way to get themselves open which is what lincoln garlock did and then you saw that pass with doolittle where he just ran a perfect route to get that right in stride now the eagles will go under center for this two-point conversion Man goes in motion, Garlock tries the sneak, goes right over the top yeah. and falls into the end zone. 26 to 16, your score now, 44 seconds to play in the half. We'll give Mason Mott an assist on that one too because he kind of pushed him over there too. And your total yards now, McComb 239, Liberty Benton 176. So again, a nice job by Liberty Benton responding to a really hard, a hot start by McComb. And the Panthers still, I mean, look, they've done a great job fending off Liberty Benton as well, responding to the Eagles scores with scores of their own, maintaining a lead. Now, I'll tell you what, if, if Garlock and his receivers start getting their timing down and get back in that rhythm, which they've had all season long, they've not had it here in this first half until that last series right there where you saw, you know, the first play was, yeah, the, the receiver was able to work his way around and get loose and get, Garlock had time. But that last pass for the touchdown to Doolittle was right on the money, right in stride, perfect route, perfect throw, everything. So if they, if they can get back, if Liberty Bank gets back into this groove, you know, and gets their timing back, this is going to be a very, very interesting game in the second half. Doolittle lines up to kick this away. Doolittle. 
Nice high kick, and it lands in the end zone. So McComb will start from the 20-yard line with 44 seconds on the clock. A team that's only passed the football one time tonight. Went for 35 yards. But it was also kind of a miracle catch as well yeah. <laughs> down the left side. But, you know, they, they don't throw. I mean, there's no obviously with that. You know, it, once in a while, you know, if, if they put Whitmire behind the center, he'll throw the football. He's thrown 29 times this season. You know, but they're going to stick with, you know, it looks like with Woodruff behind center, and he's only thrown three passes this season. So, you know, they have certain things they do depending on who's at their quarterback position. And... That's a nice option to have if you're a coach. And McComb takes a knee to end the half. The play clock didn't start until the game clock was under 40, so no more plays will need to be run as Liberty Benton heads to the locker room and the Panthers will follow behind. Your halftime score from Doc Miller Field in McComb. It's the Panthers 26, the Eagles 16 on WOSN. Second half coming up for you after the break. Our scoreboard tonight is made possible by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. And they're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Welcome back to Doc Miller Field in Macomb where the Panthers lead 26 to 16 over the Liberty Benton Eagles. Evan Skilleter and Dar Nevergall with you tonight. Nick Nunez and Matt Brown on the cameras. And Dar, you have a stat sheet. There are quite a few interesting things to look at as we take a look at the first half stats. Well, let's look at total offense. You know, right now Macomb, 239 yards of total offense, 204 of those on the ground, which is not surprising. You know, you look at uh, Liberty Benton, 176 yards of total offense. You know, 98 of those in passing yards, 78 on the ground. You know, Andrew Swisser already with two touchdowns, 108 yards on 14 carries in the first half. You know, and Bra Braxton Althauser with 92 yards on eight carries in that first half and one touchdown. You know, Garlock leads Liberty Benton with 51 yards on the ground and 98 yards in passing. McComb returns the kick. They won the toss, deferred to the second half. And they'll start their first drive of the second half from about the 21 yard line. A team that ran the ball very effectively in the first half. Well, they, they pretty much dominated the first half with the running game and their defense was playing so well, you know, but then towards the end of the second quarter, you know, Garlock began to connect with his receivers. You saw it on a long touchdown pass, you know, to do little, you know, so they, the momentum is really, if you look at it, is on the Liberty Benton side. And you can see it on their defense right now. They're all fired up right now. And the first play of the half goes for a loss. We don't see that very often from this Panthers offense, but it brings up second down 11. Well, when you come out, you know, the end of a end of the half, you know, scoring on a long touchdown pass like they did, that really will change the momentum and the fire up of this team. Now they run this one to the left side, and it's a good pickup. It's enough for the Eagle Insurance first down. And I believe it's Swisher. It's getting tough to see as we get later in the evening. Yeah, and it's tough to see those numbers on the Macomb Panthers' backs anyhow because they're – Black jerseys with those uh, kind of maroon color numbers, you know, that are pretty dark to see. Ball up to the 34-yard line for this first and 10. Woodruff under center. Now they go to the right side, looking for spaces. Althauser. Althauser finds some space and now gets knocked out at about the 40-yard line. We'll see the official spot here momentarily, but a good pickup on first down for the Panthers. Yeah, that was all Braxton right there on that carry because Braden Wages was all over him coming out of the backfield and able to force him to the outside. You know, Ohio just took it around that corner and was able to make that corner to get that extra yardage. It's a pickup of six, second down four here. They'll run this one off tackle right side here. Swisher 
Swisher with a big pickup as he's pushed out of bounds. And another Eagle Insurance first down into Eagle territory go the Panthers. I'll tell you, he's a dangerous runner, Andrew Switzer is. When he gets to the outside, you know, he is so good at finding little holes and picking his way through those defenders, and he just did it again on that play. Ball up to the 44-yard line. Swisher again looking for space, none there. He's wrapped up at the line of scrimmage, brought down by a host of tacklers that includes Braden Wages as well as Devin Montalbean. Gavin Gillig. Gavin Gillig in there as well. No gain on the play. Second down, 10. No gain on the play. That'll make it second down and 10. Yeah, LB sniffed that play out right away. Power formation heavy on the right side as McComb puts an extra lineman on the outside, but they run it left. This is Montana Pierce. Pierce looking for the edge. Oh, nice Pierce job. with a nice cut, and he has a good pickup. Not quite enough for the first down, but a third and very short coming up for the Panthers. I'll tell you what, Evan, that, that play didn't look like it was going to go for anything because, you know, LB was doing a nice job of getting down the line and, and you know, just closing things off. And, man, Montana Pierce just kind of slid sideways right through there. bring up a third down and two. Third down two here for the Panthers. Woodruff hands this off right side. And a decent pick up there. And but it, excuse me, it's plenty for the first down. You know, one of the things Coach Garlock said as far as the keys for this team was to match the physicality of this Macomb team. But yeah, Benton's pretty much done a decent job of that. You know, we've seen some hard hits out there on both sides of the ball. You know, so neither team's really, you know, it looks like two heavyweights just throwing punches. Woodruff right side, it's Swisher again. And Swisher spins off a tackler near the 25 yard line. It's a six yard pickup for McComb. And it's a typical McComb drive. I mean, just play after play, run the ball, run the ball, get a nice long drive. You have a lot of time off the clock. It's already eaten off four minutes almost here on this drive. You know, just keep running the ball, running the ball. Two runners in the backfield. Swisher again, Swisher right side. Swisher somehow finds some space to pick up the Eagle Insurance first down as he gets right to the 20 yard line. First down, Panther. On the 20 yard line. Already four and a half minutes off the clock. Very efficient offense. McComb, I believe, has only thrown the ball one time. Just one time. That went for 35 yards, but that's the only pass they've thrown tonight. They'll run it to the right side this time. And they'll pick up a couple, but not nearly as much as they're accustomed to. They averaged 8.8 .8 yards per play before that one. And they ran into big number 77. That looks like Isaiah Higgins out there. It's a two yard gain, second and eight now for the Panthers. But right now for McComb, the big thing is to keep that offense of Liberty Benton's off the field, and this drive is doing just that. Tight end on the right side of this formation. Now they'll hand it off left side. And a rare carry there for Brad Meals as Meals picks up a couple more. And a third down coming up for McComb. Brad Meals. That was a big third down play here for uh, McComb. Third down and four. A very manageable four yards, third and four though for him. Generally, McComb would go for it on a fourth and four. Yeah. And we'll see what they do on third down here, but likely two downs to play with. 
Do they need it though? Looking to the edge is Althauser oh. and he goes nowhere. He's dropped for maybe a loss. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but fourth and four coming up indeed. That was the big freshman out there, Miles Bailey, the, you know, just kind of wrapped his arms around him and just th took him down. You know, Bailey, just like I said, a freshman, 5'11", 175 pounds. Comb has officially had the ball for over half of this third quarter. Eight minutes of real time and six and a half minutes of game time. They're going to look to pass this one. Woodruff throws, and that's a catch. Referee says catch. I saw a catch as well. Well done there by the receiver. I'm looking for a number here for that Swisher that caught that ball. Somehow kept that right foot in bounds. Liberty Benton doesn't like it, but I could see from here that was a good catch. That's a great catch. Again, they've only thrown the ball twice, and both times the receivers have been able to keep their feet in bounds down the sideline. So Swisher with the catch, Swisher with the run here near the goal line, and he's going to be just short. I don't think McComb cares as they are just milking this clock. It's unbelievable, isn't it? I don't know, outside of Marion Local, I don't know a team in our area that rushes the ball as efficiently as this McComb Panthers team does. Yeah, and when you look at the fact that they're without their, their starting quarterback who got injured, and they've been able to, to still maintain this offense, even with Grant Deshaun, you know, on the sideline. Left side, Swisher makes a cut and gets into the end zone. A Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown for Mr. Swisher. That was a big hole he ran right through, too. Nice blocking up front by the McComb offensive line. McComb up 32 to 16 with a PAT pending. They've missed all of the PATs or PAT kicks they've attempted tonight. They're going to go for two here with Woodruff again under center. Hands this one to Swisher. Swisher looking for the edge, reaches out, and he is. I don't know. No one knows. Doesn't call it. Apparently Looks like not. he was short. No signal for a good nope. conversion. Now we get one. No good. So the score remains 32 to 16. McComb on top of 43 to go here in the third quarter. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is made possible by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, and they are hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Today's premier sponsor for the Macomb Panthers is Hoverman Insurance, focusing on giving our clients the personal customer service they deserve. Welcome back to Doc Miller Field, where Macomb leads 32 to 16, looking for an outright BVC title. And well in control of this game as Liberty Benton returns this one back to the 29-yard line. And it's the first time they've touched the ball in the second half, believe it or not. A <laughs> seven-and-a-half-minute drive for the McComb Panthers resulted in six points. Now Liberty Benton with some work to do. And the other impressive thing for, for McComb is the fact, if you look on the sideline, their roster that they have, there may be something just north of uh, 30 players maybe on this Macomb roster. A lot of guys going both ways this entire game. A lot of hard hitting out there. And Macomb's still up 32 to 16. Thirty players exactly dressed in this game tonight for Macomb as Garlock throws quickly out to the left side, caught by his brother. That's Lincoln Garlock. Garlock. Plenty for the Hegel Insurance Agency first down. And Lake Garlock with 784 yards receiving coming into this game. Averages Eagles. almost 15 yards a catch. Eagles get the play in, 16 on the play clock. 
Garlock with the snap. He will hand this off to Mason Mod. Mod with some space as he gets up the field, and we'll see where they put this down. It's going to be close to a first down. Still no signal. And it's just short, so a second down here. They run the same play. Mod this time wrapped up at the line of scrimmage, but he only needed about half a yard. Still no call. And now they stop the clock, and I think they're going to measure this one. Take a second to thank our sponsors again, our scoreboard sponsor, Charles River. First down sponsor tonight, Hegel Insurance Agency. Our touchdown sponsor, Northwest Ohio Recycling. And our premier sponsor tonight for the Macomb Panthers is Hoverman Insurance. If you want to sponsor one of our games or multiple games, very affordable prices, just call the station. We'd be happy to set you up with someone from the sales team to talk about different options for you as Liberty Benton officially has the first down. First down so another Eagle Insurance Agency first down for the Eagles as they continue this drive. 340 on the clock. They're kind of mixing the pass and the run very effectively right now. Trying to go over that right side a little bit. Garlock, quick pass, complete to Garlock. That's Lincoln. Lincoln Garlock, another first down That's for the Eagles. Another first down for the Eagles. Cam and, and Lincoln starting to hook it up there now where they were in the first half a little bit off on the on the pass and catch, but they're starting to put it together. And you and I talked about it briefly, but there were a couple good passes that were just dropped yeah. in the first half, but we haven't seen too many drops here in the second half. And really since the first quarter, the Eagles receivers have done a nice job handling the football. Garlock keeps this one met oh. in the backfield and brought down. Big play there by McCombs, number 52. That's Owen DeWeese. Owen DeWeese, the top for the Panthers. Owen DeWeese, 59 tackles coming into this game. You know, four tackles for loss. Just add another tackle for loss for him right there. Drops him back three yards, brings up second down 13. Two wide receivers to the top of this formation. One down to the left. Garlock wants to throw that way, and that one is incomplete. Wow. Well, incomplete. Good coverage there by the Macomb defensive backfield. That looks like number five, Braden Shoup there on the coverage, and so third and long for Liberty Benton. Yeah, well intended for Seth Elkhart. But I'll tell you what, that ball was fired in there by Garlock, and right hit, defender hit the receiver right at the right time. Garlock alone in the backfield, wants to pass, has some time, throws over the top, and incomplete. That's a little high. Intended for Zach Elkert, and so fourth and 13 coming up for Liberty Benton, and we're to the point where they probably have to oh, go for go this. For it. Even if they don't make it, they're still got the ball in McComb's territory. But I'll tell you what, I'd be afraid to give it back to McComb the way they've been running the ball and eating time off the clock. 2.46 on the clock here in the third quarter. Play clock down to 10 as Liberty Benton figures out their personnel for this fourth down. Play clock down to four. They're probably going to have to take a timeout, and they do. So with 2.46, we step aside. McComb on top, 32-16. Welcome back to Doc Miller Field. Following a Liberty Benton timeout. Fourth down 13 for the Eagles. Have four receivers out, two on each side. Garlock looks to pass, throws over the middle, and incomplete. Oh, what a a good job play. jumping the oh. route. I think that shoot back there again, the second time he's broken up a pass on this drive. And McComb will take over. Wow, what a defensive play by that young man. 
just, you know, timing's everything when it comes between defensive backs and receivers, and that one was perfect timing by the defensive back. Nice effort by the receiver just to try to get his hands on the ball, but give all the credit in the world to the Macomb defensive backs on that one. So Macomb's last drive lasted seven and a half <laughs> minutes. They could get this clock down into the middle of the fourth quarter if they can replicate that. They'll start this drive by giving the ball back to their guy, Andrew Swisher. Left side. And he picks up six yards to bring up second and six. And I'll tell you what, it's all in that first step for Swisher. I mean, he gets that, that first jump step, gets around the corner, and then he kind of slides right through there to pick up that yardage. I'll tell you what, he could break off a long one again, like he did in the first, in the first quarter. McComb will take their time. Play clock at eight before they snap this one. They run it to the right side. Swisher again, and he's going to be short of the first down, but a third and very manageable coming up for McComb. It's third down two. Third down and two for the Panthers. The other thing with Swisser, too, is he knows exactly where he wants to run the ball. I mean, it's a set play, and he knows what it is. Yep, that's going to be an off encroachment there. Flag on the play. Offside, Todd LB. And so five free yards for the McComb Panthers. And another Eagle Insurance Agency first down. First down and 10. The and those hurt. You, you know, it's bad enough that you kind of stop three running backs back here, plus the quarterback for McComb. But then you give him five free yards like that. That's that's really a killer. A pretty clean game so far. Only six penalties. Both teams with three. Liberty Benton has surrendered 25 penalty yards. McComb only seven because a few of those occurred inside the five yard line. As Swisher runs this one on first down, and he's brought Swisher. down after a gain of. Uh, we'll give him two. Probably closer to one. Just feeling generous today, Dar. There you go. Oh, they gave him one, so. <laughs> All right, fine. Gain of one, <laughs> second down nine. But the other thing is, is we're down to 40 seconds left here in the third quarter. And McComb will have to run one more play in the third. They run this right side. And another nice play by Althauser. He breaks oh, one look tackle. Out, look out. He has wheels. Nice tackle there by Seth Elkert, but not before another Eagle Insurance Agency first down. Althauser making some things happen. Well, he hasn't carried a whole lot. He had eight carries in the first half for 92 yards. You know, and he hasn't seen, he really called his name here in the, in the second half too much. Most of it's been Swisser. But I'll tell you what, that young man has some wheels when he gets out there. He averaged 11 and a half yards in that first half on the ground. And that will do it for a fast moving third quarter. Teams will take a break, we'll take a break as well. Fourth quarter coming up after this, McComb leading 32 to 16 over the Liberty Benton Eagles on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Hegel Insurance in Finley. Hegel Insurance has over 65 years of experience in the insurance agency, offering coverage for auto, home, business, life, commercial, and more. Tonight's touchdowns are presented by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Welcome back for the start of the fourth quarter here at Doc Miller Field in Macomb. Evan Skilleter and Dar Nevergall on the mics and Matt Brown and Nick Nunez on the cameras for you tonight. Macomb in control here, 32 to 16. And they start this quarter with the ball and hand it right to Andrew Swisher, who picks up eight. Yeah, that quick hitter by Swisher is, uh, is deadly so far tonight. He just showed it again right there. And He's got a, just a, a, a knack for just finding that extra yardage every time he carries the ball. 
That's a gain of seven, rather. So it's second down three coming up for McComb. If you're just joining us, McComb got out to a 18 to nothing lead in this game. Liberty Benton slowed the bleeding a bit, and then McComb came out and started this half with a seven and a half minute drive. Putting together a nice one oh. here, but a nice job there by Liberty Benton getting in the backfield and bringing down the ball carrier. Trevor Otley back there with the tackle. Yeah, Otley with 19 tackles for loss coming into this game. Just tack on number 20 right there. That's going to make it a third down and four for the Panthers. So a loss of yards brings up third down four. Unofficially, only the third time McComb's been stopped behind the line of scrimmage tonight. That's my own math, so definitely don't take my word for it. He'll give it to Swisher on the right side. Swisher needs four yards, and he gets six. And you can't ask for anything more from your offensive line than McComb's got tonight. I mean, they are just, you know, blowing a LB off of there a little bit to give Swisher the opportunity to get those extra yards. But, you know, they're doing a great job of blocking up front. So a Hegel Insurance tut or first down, excuse me, for McComb. Looking for a Northwest Ohio recycling First touchdown. And 10, at the First and 10 from the 17 yard line. Woodruff hands this one off. Left side. Nice block on the outside. Oh. And Swisher stumbles. Still picks up a good run, but could have had more if he hadn't have stumbled as he gets near the 10 yard line. Yeah. Swisher trying to make that last break, you know cut to the inside there just a little bit he just feet went out from under him he picks up seven second down three here for the Panthers ball at the 11 yard line stay in the same formation double tight ends three runners in the backfield left side and Swisher tried to cut it upfield and runs right into a host of tacklers there's Trevor and Otley again for uh, LB leading that charge. With forward progress, he gets about a yard. Still stays right around that third down and three mark. Third down and three for the Panthers. Well, they, they surprised us this last time they had a situation like this with a pass play. Let's see if they do that again. And again, it's Swisher, and he's close to the first down. Referees wave the arms, and it is indeed a Hegel Insurance first down for the Panthers as this drive continues. The clock keeps ticking, and it's first and goal from the six. For the Panthers at the six yard line. McComb shoot off what? Two and a half minutes uh, there at the end of the third quarter of time, and now they're down. They shoot off another. You know, almost four minutes here in this the fourth quarter. The ball closer to the seven yard line as they run this to the right side. Althauser bounces off one man, makes another one miss. He's got some oh work to do. Goodness. Althauser's still running backward, finally brought down by the shoulder pad. And certainly as a coach, you're not happy about that, but I think you can swallow that pill when your team's up yeah. by 16 in the fourth quarter. I think so too. You no, know, after a while there, he's looking at nothing but white jerseys all over the place. So a big loss. I'm not going to do the math because I'll get it wrong. <laughs> you have to have a calculator for this one. <laughs> so second down and goal from the 28-yard line. My goodness. And... I wouldn't put it past McComb to get these yards back quickly. But they're going to have some work to do as that one goes for just a few yards. And Liberty Benton's going to take a timeout to try to stop this clock. Well, they will stop the clock. Brad Meals was the ball carrier. And with that, we'll step aside with 7.54 to go in the fourth quarter. Still 32-16. McComb on top on WOSN.
Tonight's touchdowns are presented by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. Paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. McComb with 27 yards to go till they get a touchdown. That's third and goal after a big loss by Althauser. Now McComb's going to try to throw. They go for oh, the end zone. Out, They've got out. a man, and it's oh. dropped. Glauser had it in his paws, and it falls incomplete. A fantastic ball, though, thrown by Chase Woodruff. And it brings up fourth and 27 in a weird spot. I mean, you don't really want to punt from here. It looks like they're going to try a field goal. They've missed all their PATs, but they're going to give this one a shot. It's a It's a 44-yard field goal. Wow, why not? Boy, a tough break though for Cam Glauser because he, he, you know, he was wide open there. Maybe that, you know, maybe too wide open in that case. So Meals will try this one. A kick is up. It's going to be short. It was online. Really not a bad effort from Hell. right there, but Liberty Benton will get the ball back. 7:41 on the clock. One timeout left for the Eagles, so they have to work quickly in this offense. Yeah, they're going to have to come out firing. They're going to have to get, you know, some of those crossing routes that they've been running and stuff. They're going to have to be in full gear, you know, right now because they really have to score quickly. You know, they cannot afford, if even if they score a touchdown, you know, that gives the ball back to McComb, and McComb can eat off the rest of the time in this game. Quick pass left side. It's caught by Doolittle. Doolittle goes out of bounds. Woodruff over there in coverage. It's a pickup, uh, looks like about six yards. Second and four coming up. Now what you gotta be careful of if you're McComb is don't play in that prevent defense type of thing. You know, you wanna keep the guys in front of you, but you don't wanna make the mistake of letting them get loose for one of those long throws. Garlock. Quick throw left side. That one's out of reach of Doolittle. So a quick third down coming up, and it's third and five. I had the last one wrong. So third down five. Certainly four down territory in terms of time and situation. Yeah, this is a big third down play here for Liberty Benton. They have to convert on this third down to keep this drive alive because, like I said, if they don't, they're going to be facing a fourth and, and probably fourth and five again. If Garlock to throw over the top and intercepted. He got hit as he threw, overthrew his receiver, and this one will be returned by guess who? <laughs> Andrew Swisher with the interception to seal the deal for McComb. I know wild things can happen, but this is a team that has run the ball very effectively, oh, yeah. and there's only 722 remaining and a 16-point lead for McComb. Yeah, they're going to have a short field here, too, so they have an opportunity to, to drive it down there, eat a lot of time off the clock, put points on the board at the end of it, and put this game out of reach. But, you know, great job by Andrew Switcher. That was his second interception of this season. He, was, he looked like a center fielder out there just waiting for the ball to come down. Woodruff under center. He'll hand this one off. Swisher. Swisher looking for some space. Cuts up. On the left side, picks up a few on first down. Again, good job by the offensive line for uh, McComb to seal off those, you know, with those blocks to seal off those defenders, allows Swisser to make that cut back inside. This has really been a very impressive game for McComb all the way around. Not only the running game, you know, a couple passes that went for, you know, Big plant passes that you know went for big gains. Right side, Swisher trying to keep his footing, gets back to the line of scrimmage, but that's about it. I tell you what, you go into the playoffs with a running game the way that McComb has, the ability to run off time, off the clock, and sustain drives, you know, and. Just do things, the, the big thing that you need to do, and that's, that's keep the other team off the field. And they've done a great job all season long of that. Like I said, they're 8-1, and one, you know, looking to go 9-1 and one if they can hang on to this, this game, you know, for the season. 
Their only loss, of course, to Marion Local, who's destroyed everybody this season. Left side, Althauser. Althauser hit, stayed inbounds. Oh, yep, didn't like that one. I thought he stayed inbounds and got hit while he was in, but the flag comes out anyway. Uh, one thing we didn't mention about McComb is, is the discipline. Only three penalties. They've gone for seven yards. Again, two of those were inside the 10-yard line, so they're only half the distance to the goal. But I'll tell you what, that's a, that's a recipe for success. Clock control, and it is. discipline, and success running the football, like you said. But the thing with McComb coming in this game is, you know, they – they really are not a team that doesn't have a lot of penalties. They usually have more penalties than what they've seen tonight. A couple of their penalties, like we said, were inside the five, which really weren't true to the number of yardage. But they had 60 penalties coming into this game for 527 yards, averaging almost 58 yards per game in penalties. So they've done a nice job tonight of staying away from that. Second and goal now from the four yard line for McComb. Clock down to five and a half. Certainly happy to take their time here. Pretty quick moving game. Anytime you call a game for a team that goes that quickly or runs the ball that effectively. Yeah, and just keeps the clock running the whole time. Oh, nice job. And that's a touchdown for McComb. I believe it was Montana Pierce. Montana Pierce indeed with the touchdown. Montana Pierce. Boy, nice job of bouncing off of defenders, bouncing off his own offensive lineman too, to spin around and make it to the end zone. Thirty-eight to sixteen now after the Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown, and that PAT is good. And a round of applause from the McComb crowd. Thirty-nine to sixteen, the score here. McComb on top of the Liberty Benton Eagles with five oh nine to go. We'll be right back with more on WOSN after this. Touchdowns tonight are presented by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. Bank top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Welcome back. Following one of those Northwest Ohio Recycling touchdowns, this time it was Montana Pierce for McComb. And a big lead for the Panthers, 39 to 16 here at home. Well, McComb came in averaging 45 yards or 45 points on offense, giving up 16 points on defense. And they're sticking right to that. They're almost right there. What their offensive and defensive average coming into this game were. This one goes into the end zone for a touchdown, or touchback, excuse me. But just to show what McCombs defense has been able to do tonight, Liberty Benton's offensive average coming into this game was 39.8 points per game and they've been held to 16 points tonight. First down and 10. Liberty Benton trying to change that as Garlock comes back out. Two wide receivers split out to his left side. Garlock to pass, wants to go down the sideline. And that one in and out of the hands of Doolittle. That's incomplete. Good effort down the right side by Case and Doolittle. Yeah, that'd been a tough catch if he could hang on to that one there. Looking over his shoulder, trying to track the ball the whole way down that sideline. Reaching out there, the ball hit his hands, but boy, that would have been a tough catch. Brings up second down 10. Two wide receivers down to the right side for Garlock. And that one through the hands of his target, incomplete. Third down coming up. Pretty much the pattern of the night for uh, Mr. Garlock back there. I mean, his passes, you know, he throws it with a little crispness on it. There's no doubt about that. But a lot of passes in and out of the hands of the receivers. A lot of drop passes, and you know, those type of things. But 
you know, they just haven't had the timing quite all night long. They have on a couple plays, you know, where they, you know, they've been effective, but really not the way they normally do. Garlock wants to throw this one, this time left side, and this time it's caught. Seth Elkert with the grab, and another Hegel Insurance Agency first down. Elkert, another one of those freshmen out here on this uh, Liberty Benton team. You know, you know, a six foot three, 180 pound freshman. You're looking at him as a freshman. Zach Elkert is another freshman out there. You know, Miles Bailey, a freshman. So, you know, good future here for this Liberty Benton team. Team that, you know, came into this game at seven and two, you know, and is heading for the playoffs, but, you know, playing you know, three freshmen on their starting lineup. And right below me, I've got Batman chasing the Joker across the stands. I don't know if that came across on the camera, but it's fun to watch here. Students dressed up. Another complete or completion, excuse me, as Garlock finds his man on the left side. That's Caden Boutwell. Eagles quickly back to the line for this third down. Garlock keeps it and ill-advised there as he's brought down in the backfield. Wow. Wilson Grubb. Wilson Grubb with the tackle and a fourth down eight coming up for Liberty Benton. And I'll tell you what, the junior got in there in a hurry for McComb. You know, Wilson Grubb, you know, just blitzing right through there, got in the backfield, just grabbed. Garlock by the by the ankle and said, "That's it. You're not going anywhere." Fourth and eight. Liberty Benton lining up to go for it. Trips out to the right side. Garlock rolls that way, throws and incomplete. No flag on the play. Good coverage once again by the Macomb backfield. That was Braden Shoup, whose name we've called a couple times on past breakups. Braden Shoup's played an outstanding game from that secondary position. You know, he's been in on a lot of plays, of crucial plays, and been able to be right there when the receivers, you know, getting tempting to catch the ball. So good job by that young man. So McComb just a little bit to, of work left to do here. A couple first downs, maybe just one, and they'll be able to knee this one for the victory. Starting this drive from their own 48-yard line as Althauser gets down the left side. Althauser with a gain of three. So if you have this number three, Let's see if they give him a steady diet of Mr. Althauser right now. Yep, he's coming off the field right at the moment. Three one four four seven seven zero. Brad Mills going back into that backfield. Ball into Eagle territory at the 49. Left side. Another nice pickup for McComb. That was Mills on the carry. Mills, Mills just coming in to replace Alheimer, Alheimer on that play. Nice carry to the inside, cut back in, you know, in, gained a couple extra yards on that play. So third and short, three yards to go. McComb tries the hard count. They'll run the play. Meals, left side. Sorry, that's Montana Pierce. And Pierce has enough for the Eagle Insurance Agency first down. I'll tell you what, Evan, you look at this backfield, and we've said it the whole, the whole game long, but, you know, you've got Swisser back here. You've got, uh, you know, Altheiser, you know, the guys that you rely on a lot back in that backfield. But then you throw in these other guys, you know, you know, Montana Pierce, uh, you know, Brad Mills, you know, you know, just a supplement, you know, those those two big backs for him in the backfield. And it is tough because you can't key on any one of these guys back there. And they run this one right up the middle. That's Pierce again on the carry. 
You look down the line, Andrew Swisher, 195 yards on the ground on 34 carries, three touchdowns. Althauser with 107 on 15 carries, and one touchdown, and then Pierce with 29, Meals with 12. Like you said, a lot of different guys that can do a lot of different things for this team. And they're all different in their own respect as far as how they run the ball, too, which makes it tough for the de defense. You can't get into a pattern, you know, knowing what, you know, this guy runs it, you know, the same as the other guy, because they don't. And now maybe another score, no. Pierce almost breaks it for the touchdown, but a shoestring tackle there by Liberty Benton's Noah Heelman brings him down. It's a good run and a Eagle Insurance Agency first down. Now we're to the point where McComb can just kneel it if they would like. I don't know. I got a feeling McComb's going to, you know, add a little emphasis to this game, you know. You know, this is for, you know, seven out of the last ten times these teams have met has been for the BVC, either a share of the conference or an outright championship. So I got a feeling that, you know, it's been a battle every year in and out. They're four and four in the last eight times they've met each other. You know, two and two on each other's opposite fields. So, and McComb going to take a knee and let this clock run out. But uh, what a great game for the McComb Panthers tonight. I, I, they put everything together that they needed to, defense, offense, control the game, control the clock. LB, you know, just couldn't get in sync after that. You hear the crowd chanting BVC. It's a BVC title for the McComb Panthers as they win it outright. A perfect 7-0 conference record. They move to 9-1 on the season and playoff time in Northwest Ohio, all across the state, really, as Macomb will host a playoff game next week. Liberty Benton falls to seven and three, five and one in the BVC. Clock still ticking at 11 seconds, but want to thank our sponsors one more time. Charles River, Eagle Insurance Agency, Northwest Ohio Recycling, and Hoverman Insurance. The McComb Panthers with 195 rushing yards from Andrew Swisher, 107 rushing yards from Braxton Althauser, and 39 points from their offense win this one, 39 to 16. Thank you so much to the McComb Athletic Department for hosting us tonight and their hospitality and friendliness up here in the press box. Thank you to our guys, Nick Nunez and Matt Brown with their camera work tonight. And thank you to Dar for working with me. And as always, thank you to you the viewer for tuning in to high school football on WOSN. For Darn Evergolf, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off one more time. Your final, McComb 39, Liberty Benton 16. Have a great night and God bless.